do is I just want to spend a few moments this morning and dig deeper, beyond monologue, beyond dialogue, towards communion and this attitude we ought to have by prayer and really look at the essence of prayer to delve into a deeper understanding and perhaps supply us with some insights that have gone beyond our experience and our understanding. And the first insight I want to share with you is the insight from Roberta Bondi. And she shares this, and I'm going to repeat this twice. It, it, it was um, an aha moment for me. She defines prayer as this. Prayer is a shared life with God. Prayer is a shared life with God. She goes on to say that we need to understand that prayer is spirit-fed and spirit-led. It's a continual attention to the life of the spirit within us. You know, that, that, that seems to be the real catchword these days. And I don't know how many people I've talked to, especially uh, in my premarital counseling and such things, and I'll, I'll talk to people outside the life of the church, and they'll say this, and, and perhaps folks have said it to you also. They'll say, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. I want you to think about that just for a moment. I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. And on the surface, I, I agree with it. I think a, less, a little less religion for everybody would be good. But what I question is this. I wonder what they mean by spiritual. Because I think if pressed, they really wouldn't know. And sometimes when we try to decipher between religion and spirituality, all we end up really doing is pushing one to the side and playing with the other. I know I'm not religious. I'm spiritual. With no clue what that means. With no impact in our lives. With no understanding how to delve into becoming spiritual. All we do is we kick one to the curb. And we call ourselves the other. Without really knowing what that other truly is. Roberta Bonde also says that we need to understand that we do not control our prayers. We don't control God, or even at times our own lives. Prayer is not a bartering, a negotiation, a self-righteous proclamation, or even driven by what we perceive as results. Oh, that's a whole other sermon. The results of prayer... It is a gift that allows us to live our humanity with the divine to the gift of life with the giver. Prayer is a shared life with God. <clears throat> the second idea I want to share with you comes from Reverend Dr. Charles Webb. And he defines prayer as one word. Prayer is change. Interesting concept. He says this, and I'm going to quote him because I can quote better than I can paraphrase. He says this, I remember playing with the pew pencils in church when I was a kid. And the pencils always had these words inscribed on them. Prayer changes things. As I've grown in my faith, I've learned that prayer does indeed change things. But it is not God who changes, it is me that changes. There's a wonderful old phrase that gets to the root of what I'm saying. And I'm going to say this twice because this is deep. Quote, prayer does not give us what we want, but prayer helps us want what we need. Ooh, ooh, that's deep. I'm going to repeat that. If you get anything out of my babbling this morning, please get that. Prayer does not give us what we want, but prayer helps us want what we need. You see, prayer is not designed to change or persuade God. It is designed by God to change us. Prayer is a spiritual discipline through which we are formed into disciples. Let's not forget that. Jesus doesn't. Because notice what Jesus says in this passage. Jesus, as 
The disciples come to us, uh, Jesus teaches how to pray, he gives us the Lord's Prayer as we understand it, and then you got the neighbor knocking on the door, ask all the time, all that kind of stuff, scorpion, fish, eggs, all that kind of stuff. In the midst of all of that, we need to understand what, what, understand what Jesus does not, does not say. He does not say, how much more will the Heavenly Father give what you want when you ask for it? doesn't say that. And I'll accept any emails this week if you can prove me wrong. <laughs> it does say this. Jesus says that those who ask him will be given what? The Holy Spirit. That whole 13 verses on prayer is about receiving what we need, which is the Holy Spirit. God gives us what we need so that we are empowered and so we can grow. I have a new definition of prayer. I came across it this week in my study. It's my sermon title. My new definition of prayer is that prayer is a sacred surprise. I like that. A sacred surprise. To see prayer as a dynamic and changing encounter with God and myself where we can take this dogmatic drudgery oftentimes of prayer and set it free to encounter the living God through the Spirit. But even Scripture reveals a few more truths, other revelations. For example, what about unanswered prayer? Anybody have it? Pray for something you think you need and nothing? He said no. Even Scripture talks about unanswered prayer. Because we need to understand that prayer is not result-driven. Uh, that would be a new idea. Even Paul, countless times, calls on God and says, Take the thorn from my flesh. How'd that work out? Even Jesus pleads to God, take this cup from me. How'd that work out? Prayer is not result-driven. What prayer is, is continuous communion. Even Jesus knew that. He taught us that lesson. Throughout the Gospel of Luke, you'll find Jesus praying at every turn in his life. He prays when he receives the call on his life. He prays when he chooses his disciples. He prays when he serves and heals people. He prays when he feels the demands and pressures of ministry. He prays as he faces the cross. He prays on the cross. Jesus is continually praying as if it was every breath he took. That's the model. That's communion. I end with this. I believe that prayer is an exercise in trust. Prayer is about trusting God. Have you figured out yet that life isn't fair? Life isn't fair. But prayer is about trusting God. The most basic fulfillment of faith, I believe, is continuous prayer. Where we lay ourselves before God, where we are still and allow God to speak to us and use us. If you want a deeper faith, if I want a deeper faith, I've got to have a deeper prayer life. So I'd like to end where I started. How's your prayer life? And are you ready for a sacred surprise? Let us pray. Amen.